Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and today I'm going to show you what may be the easiest way to cut a morris. If you're a woodworker, you need to know how to create mortise and tenon joinery. It's the key to long-lasting furniture. There are lots of videos out there about cutting the tenon half of the joint. I'll link to one in the notes below this video. Just click on Show More if you're on YouTube. But today we're going to focus on the mortise half of the joint, and we're going to do it with a Forstner bit. Why a Forstner bit? Because it's fast, it's easy, there are no special jigs to set up. Frankly, it's the best way to cut some quick mortises so you can just move on with your project. The first step is layout. Let's say I want to attach a stretcher three inches from the end of a leg. So I position the two project parts on the bench, making sure I'm three inches from the leg's end, and I use a square to mark where both sides of the stretcher will be located. Now I obviously don't want my mortise to be the full width of my stretcher, so I'm going to come in about a half inch from each side. Those lines indicate the length of my mortise. The width will be determined by the size of my Forstner bit. So I need to mark a single line right down the center of where the mortise will be. To find that center, I set my combination square close to the center by eye, as much as I can judge it, and I make a mark from each side of the workpiece. If those marks fall at the same point, I found the center. Otherwise, I split the difference and I try again. This is a quick way to find the center without having to measure. Once I locate the center, I strike my final layout line. If I have more than one leg to mortise, I can now mark all the other work pieces while I still have my combination square set up. Time to head to the drill press. I stopped using cheap Forstner bits years ago. I saved up and I got the best ones on the market, which I think are made by a family-run company in Austria called Fish. They are the only company that still forges their Forstner bits the old-fashioned way. I really think that's amazing, and the quality is too. You see what I mean as we continue. The key to creating a good mortise with a Forstner bit is you have to bore a series of holes in a nice straight line. If you have a fence on your drill press table, that'll make the job a lot easier. You can even just clamp a strip of wood down as a temporary fence. If you plan on aligning your holes by eye, then I suggest you use a knife or an awl to turn your center line into a little groove so that your bit's point can slip into it. That'll make it a lot easier to align all the holes to create a nice straight mortise. I also recommend you lock the drill press table down really well so that it won't swivel from side to side. Even if you carefully set up your fence, if that swivels on the column a little bit, it's going to mess your settings up. And don't forget to set the depth stop. Bore the first hole close to the end of the mortise. You don't have to hit your mark perfectly. In fact, I sometimes intentionally bore just a little bit inside the line. You'll see why in a minute. After boring the first hole, move to the other end of the mortise and bore that hole next. Now you can remove the waste in the center by boring overlapping holes. To do this, you have to have a good Forstner bit. It has to be sharp and the guide rim has to be well designed so that it will bore straight down and not drift into the open space in the hole next to it. The point of the bit also has to be in contact with the wood at all times right on your line. That's why we bored holes at the two ends of the mortise first. Now when I get down to the last narrow little bit of material, I can still put the point of the bit on some of the wood. I wouldn't be able to do that if the last little bit of material was on the end of the mortise. Back at the bench, it's time to clean things up. A wide chisel is best for the long sides. And don't try to chop right at the edge of the holes first. Trim those little inner ribs back a little bit at a time. The reason for this is you want to make sure that your hole remains perpendicular to the face of the workpiece. You know that the Forstner bit holes are perpendicular because you used a drill press. Now if you trim the remaining waist back just a little bit at a time, you can see what you're doing and tell when you get to the outer edge of those perpendicular holes. That way you'll be sure that you don't chop down at an angle with your chisel and make your mortise crooked. On the ends, a narrow chisel is needed. Remember, we didn't bore our holes right up to the lines because I didn't want to risk overshooting them. Sometimes it's difficult to see exactly where the edge of the forcener bit will land as you lower it into the wood. So I held back from the lines a little bit and now I can easily pare back to them with my chisel. That's all there is to it. Now that I have my mortise, I can cut a tenon on the mating workpiece to fit. There's a reason we do those mortises first. A tenon can be cut to any size, but a mortise is far easier to size to the tools you have on hand, like your Forstner bit. If I cut my tenon first, 
I might not have a Forstner bit that perfectly matched the tenon's thickness, but if I cut my mortise first with that Forstner bit, I can easily adjust the thickness of my tenon to fit inside much easier than it would have been to accurately widen a mortise. Speaking of tenons, I wonder if you could cut one of those with a Forstner bit too. That sounds like a subject for a future video. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. You can read and subscribe for free at stumpynubs.com.